Good evening, everyone. How are you doing today? Welcome to another episode of Renegades React. Today, uh, it's uh, just me and Micah. We are going to be uh, looking at some uh, Disraps for Haya. This is Season 2, Episode 3. And um, there's only a few of these left, man, which is, which is sad because I've come to enjoy these a lot. I mean, because we had 4, 5, and 6 ahead of us. And... Man, it's okay. The subreddit's working on uh, getting episode seven made about me. So yeah, and also, um, also, uh, ERB will be back in May. So nice. We will have that as well. But for the time being, uh, we uh, we will be finishing up disraps for hire. And uh, what do you say we get started, my friend? Absolutely. Here we go. There it is. I am a good person. Ah! Dear Epic Lloyd, my name is Jonas. I have these four guys in my class, Nelson, Mark, Stephen, and Lucas, who are the worst freaking bullies, man. They like to pick on me for being dyslexic. They force me to dyslexic read these ungodly large words that they know I can't say just to mock me. And if I don't read them, they beat me up or stuff me into lock. Okay, it didn't it didn't read the whole thing. Large words that I can't say just to mock me, and if I don't read them, they beat me up and stuff me in the lockers. I tried talking to them to make them stop, but they ended up breaking my wrist. What? I tried everything to get them off my back. I just wanted to feel like at least someone cares. Please destroy them. That's crazy. I like, they actually broke his wrist when you confronted him? He's like Wonder Woman teleporting? I have no idea. You got this, Lloyd. There you go. At the voice, the microphone is of the stone cold. This is cold coals. I like fish bones in your neck. Let him get cold. Heat up your stove. Heads will roll. About to bake a Nelson Mark, Steven Lucas casserole. Oh. These four lame dudes all sing the same tune. This ain't the worst bullies. It's an acapella group. A quartet of maggots too. Just they're worth the talking to. Let's just mockingly assaulting them like I was brought to do. I'm godly large words, huh? You will laugh at me. You patently lack an accurate perspicacity. See, you'll just ferment the massive wrath in me. Instigating altercations such as these is of dubious sagacity. I put the diss into dyslexic. Disregard these dismal, disrespectful disappointments. As these with dysentery, y'all couldn't amount to shit. So disappear. You disavowal dicks and dismiss. And this murder is I just first verse spin. To be certain in the shirt of secure to sure win. To toss jackasses off your back like plow. Yo, Zach. Oh, y'all done fucked up now. <laughs> it's not hard to tell my recent ruthless heart is far from melting. This behavior makes me sick. I'm even puking, barfing, belching even And as far as squelch and beef, these dudes should start or else I'm leaving bruises, marks, and welts on Steven, Lucas, Mark, and Nelson What an ironic twist You jerk-offs broke Jonas's wrist And if you think it's humorous When letters get switched and written remixed Then please enjoy this Here's what happens when I blast the wrath raps past ten I got rage to vent on all sucker-ass men I'm deadlier oh. than any cobra with poisonous insults When I spit at this snake clan, venom results I'll chop off a ball each of if you start beef with Zack, leave you mean trolls with uneven sacks. And in fact, it was funny as hell to see an MC serve your stinking anus. LOL. You say that he's dyslexic, crazy, wow. crazy. He won't get crazy. it. I say bullshit Damn. and I give my man some credit. Every word he works, I will read like a present. And incentive to force repentance on this shitty full pack of degenerates. So, bro, don't feel hopeless. Show him that you own this. Flip the bird no matter how broke your wristbone is. Turn your back, start the way. Tell him about who you're known as. Sing it. Like, my name is Jonas. <laughs> All right. So Zach Sherwin has been on uh, uh, has been on ERB before. Uh, he uh, he actually played Sherlock Holmes right. against Batman, which. Zach Sherwin, in terms of lyr in terms of being a lyricist and, and in terms of rapping, I mean, guy is crazy good. And I, I was gonna say this is this is one beauty about YouTube. I mean, Lloyd and Zach Sherwin coming together. I mean, they came together in the ERB, but here hmm. it's just like wow. Just, uh, like when Zach Sherwin started doing the anagram of the different words. Oh yeah, words, that was fantastic. I was just like, dude, I can't believe that. That's awesome. That's so that's inventive to think of that. I mean. Yeah. 
I was going to say, he probably, uh, I don't know if he wrote all of them out uh, himself, but there's programs that you can do. You can, like, put stuff in, and it will give you, like, direct anagrams of what words can be made up of that, and you can make and you can make stuff out of that. I mean, it, gosh. But for him to include that in the rap like that, that was, that was awesome. It It's kind of difficult, these, because it's like they... They do it, and they try to. They generally try and include a little bit of humor in it, and there's always entertainment value. But at the same time, I mean, these are just terrible people. Like they you just, are. I mean, it's almost like you don't, you don't really want to sit there and be entertained. You just want to be grumpy about it because, I mean, like the dude dyslexic, and you pick on him and stuff him in lockers, and he's like, "Hey, like get a life, leave me alone." And they end up breaking his wrist. Are you yeah. serious? Like I, I was going to say at that point. At that point. I mean that's I mean that's assault. Them breaking yeah. your wrist, man. I mean, I mean, if they don't get the point to leave you alone, and you confront them about it, and they do that to you, I mean, at that point, either take matters into your own hands, or or get or call the police because yeah. hey, that's assault, man. I mean, they broke your wrist. And I mean, this is all kind of bizarre to me because I mean, all through high school, I and mean, people got picked on and stuff, but like. You never really saw physical violence like that. People getting stuffed in lockers or wrists broke. I mean, there was a couple <laughs> fights, mostly with girls. Yeah. But, I, I mean, it's just like it was exciting for like 30 seconds and they broke it up. I mean. Well, I, I, I saw a few myself. I mean, I, I mean. But I, I never saw like consistent bullying like, you know, was described in these. Um, I, but I, I guess you. I guess where we, we grew I grew up and went to high school is probably a little bit di- different demographic, um, you know. Because well, we don't really know, we don't really know the circumstances involved. But it's like, come on, it's like, <clears throat> I mean, the guy's dyslexic. It's not like, I mean, it's not like he's like run around being a total punk. I mean, he just has a problem seeing words on a page in the correct order. I mean, that's not a reason to like, no, cut no, on it, somebody. That's not. I mean, honestly, it's. Uh, I, I was going to say, I, I myself, I had, I had problems in high school. It was mostly me. It was mostly, you know, lack of attention. You know, I, I didn't pay attention that much because school to me was, uh, school to me, it felt dialed in. It felt like it didn't have a soul. There were a few classes I did pay attention in, and that was history class. I had good history teachers up until my senior year. Right. And my, se- and my senior year, I did so bad in my history class in, in terms of what they were, what in terms of what I was being taught and everything, that the teacher actually flunked me, that I was, that I received an F. But we took... Uh, the SOLs at the end of the year, and I scored an advance to 584. So when I scored an advance to 584, they gave me an automatic pass. They gave me an A in his class, even though he gave me an F. Hmm. And it was just like, you should have been a better teacher. Right. Uh, I mean, but in terms of fights breaking out and everything and, you know, pe- people getting picked on, I got picked on a lot because... I I liked different things. I mean, honestly, I was into I was into anime. I was into I was into music. I was into theater. I was into all that. Even when I was on fo- the football team, I was into right. that. But um, it, my last two years, I really got into uh, the theater. You know, really got into theater. Really got into music really hard. Mm-hmm. And um, it was and it was fun. I mean, it was really fun. But I still had people picking on me and everything. And um, Eventually, like the end of my the end of my junior year, I uh, I'd had enough. Uh, there were these two guys. They were they were picking on me and everything, and they they'd be pretty much following me around the school all day. I had a free period at the end of the day, mm-hmm. and after I was done with lunch, I had uh, I I pretty much do whatever I wanted, and then I had to come back for a class. I had to come back for a class at the end, and um, eventually one of them uh, one of them pushed me. Like pushed me, like trying to push me down the stairs. I started walking down the steps, and I caught myself like on the third step. I turn around, I haul off, and I nail him in the nuts as hard as I can. He get he hunches over, and I sock him across. I sock him across the temple with my right hand, and I knock and I pretty much knock him cold. The other guy tries to tackle me. I throw him down the stairs. He falls down at the bottom, and he jams his shoulder up really bad, and he's down there like wailing and everything. And all of a sudden, here comes a teacher, and I get in trouble. So, um, I had a pretty benign high school experience. Uh, apparently, Jeez. Nate was Bruce Willis. No, I was uh, not. No, <laughs> no, dude. I was just, just sick like, of it. Just I was straight just, up. Dude, they've been doing it for like the last three years. Yeah. And, I and yeah, I could handle it. But that day was really bad because it was, uh, it was, 
I, I'd had a lot on my mind, a lot. Yeah. You know, my my grandfather getting sick and everything, right? And you know, I, my dad, m- you know, seeing my dad pretty much become a pretty much become a blubbering mess, which I'd never seen him become before, and just a lot of stuff weighing on my mind. And then just that one that one hit got to me, and I, <laughs> I. It's just I was a big guy and I knew how to handle myself and these guys were pretty small. They were like five nine, like sure. if they were lucky soaking wet, they weighed hundred and thirty pounds. And me at that time I was like almost I was almost like two seventy. Right. And for them to pick on me like that, it was like they were they were prodding a bull. <laughs> they they were like little boys prodding the bull. And the bull broke and the bull got out of his pen. Well, I mean, you know, back in the eighties, I mean, you know, Europeans and action movies were fairly small stature and you know, big you know, strapping young American lad like yourself, especially, <laughs> especially, strapping. especially after they make you run through a pile of glass, you know, after, you know, Oh my gosh. Nakatomi Plaza high school. <laughs> this is how I picture <laughs> all this in my head. Like <laughs> seriously, like Hans Gruber, thing. like sent a bunch of dudes after you in your high school. And this is what happened. No, and no, you're just no. Like, it was just, you're just, you're just like, no, it, you're anything, like sitting it was outside. More like, it was more like, like typical bullying that you saw in like a Stephen King. You're like, like sitting outside the counselor's office, like picking glass out of your foot and like a bloody tank top. Just no, like, no, no. That's how it happened. I, but I had my jacket on and you know, they kept like pulling my jacket and everything, you know, like, like tugging at the, mm-hmm. tugging at the back of it and everything. And, um, it was, I just had enough. I mean, you, it's just you get pushed to a point, man. You just can't take it anymore. I mean, every everybody's got that point where they 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 just turn around and start swinging. Sure. Well, I mean, that's that's pretty ridiculous too. I mean, the guys sound like creeps. They and, they were. I mean, and I was gonna say one of them's in jail, and the other one I think right now has got like three has got like three children from two different women. Oh well, that's always nice. Yeah, and and it's just like their lives have gone to shit, and it's just like hey. Well, they sound kind of like I'm, morons. They are. I mean, that's what they get for you know trying. Well, dude, to they they they, attack, they had their problems in their lives. Attack and James they, Bond with some machetes in a stairwell. Jesus. When he's trying to win a huge. Oh, Casino Royale. <laughs> Jesus. Okay, I knew where you were going with that one. I was like, I was like, wait a second, picking glass. Oh God, yeah. And then all of a sudden, you said, you said the machetes in the stairwell. I'm like, yeah. that sounds like. Casino. And then you said yeah. trying to win the big. And I'm like, oh yeah, yeah. Casino Royale. But, and, I've. I've been in, I've, and that was really the. I've had a few more fights in high school. You know, other guys that would pick on me. And Are everything. you not allowed to talk about those? No, I can talk about those, dude. This ain't Fight Club. <laughs> this ain't Fight Club. Are you I'll sure? Talk, yeah. Because your life sounds like a one big long no, mashup action no, movie, dude. No, in truth, it it's you, you very were, few instances. Were, it's very few. Instances but you were also of you were fighting. also in a punk rock band, dude. I am right. I, I, you're yeah. still or still or well, still working I, I'm kind of like the manager. I'm kind of like a manager so thing. So used to be in. Now you manage a punk rock band. Fought like fifty dudes no. with machetes in high school. Gosh. Like seriously, it's like <laughs> no, dude. It's like dude, you're, the you're Scott Pilgrim. No, dude. The instances of me fighting you are were so Pilgrim. few and far between throughout the year. I mean, they're, they're, they they were like small exertions of violence. I mean, they, they well, like I mean, lasted like if at most a minute, I like re- you said, they, they lasted, re- they were really short. Well, I, I, read, I read the graphic novel, the Scott Pilgrim graphic novels. There was a lot of exposition in between the fights. I mean, it wasn't all fighting. So, yeah, but, yeah. but dude, I'm not Scott Pilgrim. You know, I can't pull a sword out of my chest and we haven't seen that yet. I mean, <laughs> I'm not, I'm, I'm not saying I'm Batman, but Batman and I have never been seen in the same room at the same time together. <laughs> So, <laughs> okay, I er, get that. Ergo, <laughs> ergo, you may be Bruce Wayne. Just saying. <laughs> I was Just gonna saying. say you got the you got the voice like I'm Batman. I brood a lot, so you know <laughs> you've got the personality too. Yeah, I brood a lot. Yeah, uh, and me, I'm very. Oh, well, I guess I'm kind of like Scott Pilgrim, except I'm not like I'm not. I'm not Michael Sarah. Well, no, I'm talking about the the graphic novels, the graphic. not, not okay. the movie. The movie was pretty good, though. The movie was pretty good, but yeah, it, in terms of the in terms of the graphic novels, I I read I read the first two. I read the first two. I I, I should go back and finish them, but I borrowed them from Ben. They they were better than the film. No, I, that's what but I hear. Film, film was actually still really good. Well, yeah, I mean, that's, but I mean, it's based off your life, so it sounds pretty oh, legit. Shut up, Jesus! No, dude. If anyone writes a, an autobiography of my life, I will give them the full details. It, okay, the total amount of fights I've been in, I've been in six. I've been in six fights. That's that that's were it. documented. Yeah, six. Uh, you heard about you heard about like 
I, I'm not counting like the small skirmishes I had with like my cousins and stuff like that. The because, redacted because, files. No, those are no, those are like those the are like um, files. you know those were like wrestling matches more than fights. I mean, you know, we like gripped each other and like tried to take each other down. And whoever like la- landed on the ground first lost. Those were those were like fun family skirmishes, but. I'm talking about like fist fights where I was like had intent to. Truly so what you're hurt saying is you were trained from birth. No, it's just, dude, dude. I've got I've got thick skin, man. I mean, honestly, I I can take a lot of I can take a lot of like m- like mental punishment and strain and it uh, like strain and everything. But there's just a point where it cuts too deep, and it's just like it, everybody's like that. I mean, honestly, there's people I know. All their lives they fight, but you but you meet them and they're like some of the more most cordial people you'll you'll ever meet. So what you're saying is you're tough and rugged on the outside, but you're like gooey caramel on the inside. Oh shit! Ladies, take note. <laughs> shit. No. Uh, okay. If anything, if anything, I'm I'm a, if anything, I'm a smooth milk chocolate center. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> N- nougat. Yeah. Just yeah. nougat. Yeah. The. Yeah, smooth nougat. Maybe a little bit of caramel. I'm not sure. I mean, I'm, I I don't, don't want to say I'm a Twix or anything, but well, Twix doesn't really have a hard outer shell. I'm more like one of those uh one of the of those uh I'm either an M and M or a uh, what do you uh, those Cadbury uh, Cadbury mini eggs. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm like I'm more like one of those. Uh, <laughs> except I'm not that small. I'm actually pretty large. Uh, these analogies are going nowhere. Okay, so <laughs> this diss wrap. Uh, brought up a pretty good conversation, but I'll be damned. Uh, this was this was actually this was actually really good, I, and the fact that it got oh, uh oh, what did I do? Did I hit? Oh, there we go. It just uh, screen went off for a second. Um, so the fact that this brought up a lot, I mean, it I, this was really good. I mean, I like that Zach Sherwin got in on this one, and also you know, school bullying is always uh, is always like a like a like a I'm not going to say a trigger because I don't like get mad and start yelling dumb dumb rhetoric about how I'm oppressed because I'm not. He just throws him down the stairs and he's fine. What? Dude, you tried to tackle me down. Okay. What you normally do in those situations is you try to throw them off. When they try and get a grip around right. you, you do your best to throw them off. Yeah. You do your best to get them away from you. Dude, create I s- distance. I saw you throw Hans Gruber off the top of Nakatomi Plaza High School. Okay, like we're I- ending it. <laughs> Thanks again, everybody. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in. This was Disraps for Hire, Season 2, Episode 3. We are the Renegades. I'm Nate. That's Micah. See you. Bye. Jesus. <laughs>